All right, it is six o'clock and I will call the eighth regular common council meeting to order. Will the clerk please state the quote of the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Striving for success without hard work is like trying to harvest where you haven't planted. All right, will you please call the roll? Alderperson Bourne? Here. Alderperson Savaglio? Present. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Felicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Salazar. Excused. Alderperson Perella. Yes. Alderperson Laster. Here. There are nine present. Right. For everyone present, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I love these chairs. <laughs> All right, 1.3, approval of the minutes from this uh, our previous council meeting. Alderperson Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. 4.1, the resignation of Charlie Wig from the Architectural Review Board. Alderperson Feldy? I move, mo excuse me. I move to accept and file. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That's approved. Uh, 1.5, mayoral appointments, city attorney. There is one. Uh, the mayor submits the following appointment for your consideration. Monica Hart uh, to the Mayor's International Committee for a term expiring April 18, 2022. And that lays over. 1.6, 6, confirmation of mayoral appointments. City Attorney. The mayor submits the following appointments for your consideration to the Housing Rehabilitation Loan Commission, Gina Cavelli, for a term expiring April 18, 2022. To the Board of Marina Parks and Forestry Commissioners, Travis Gross, for a term to expire April 18, 2022. And to the Library Board, Amanda Salazar, for a term to expire April 15, 2024. Uh, Alderperson Feldy? I move to confirm. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Alderperson Perella? Nine eyes. All right. Anyone <clears throat> for public forum? No one this evening. All right. Mayoral announcements for 1.8. Uh, just a few, a few quick announcements uh, today. Um, in partnership with the county and the Sheboygan County Economic Development uh, Corporation, um, Administrator Wolf and I have um, been working together regarding the American Rescue Plan Advisory Committees, working with different stakeholders through the community to develop um, community priorities in terms of how we will be spending our American Rescue Plan dollars. Any additional questions, please reach out to myself or Administrator Wolf. Um, some of the key advisory committees regarding these issues will revolve around affordable housing, childcare, broadband, mental health, workforce development, and transportation. Um, coming up on August 3rd from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. is National Night Out. This year will be at Roosevelt Park. I encourage all elders to, to attend and promote that with your constituents. July 30th, um, SCIO will be hosting uh, the night market on the city green. Um, next Pops concert in the park at Fountain Park will be on July 21st at 6 p.m. 
Um, and then just wanted to reiterate and underline um, the announcement that was made uh, the other week with the City of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation announcing that S2A module modular will be um, setting up shop in our business park. So I wanted to thank Administrator Wolf, um, Chad Pelichek, um, and our partners um, that all helped out making this project move forward and the council for their affirmative vote uh, to make this project move forward. So this will bring um, upwards of to 250 jobs to our community, filling our business park. Um, this company will be manufacturing and building affordable and sustainable homes um, that will help address our housing situation all over the region. So thank you so much. Moving right along, 2.1 to the consent agenda. Um, Alder Person Feldy. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive and all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. There's been a motion and second to accept the consent agenda. Any discussion? Alder Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on 2.4, uh, regarding the South Point Enterprise uh, Campus, I was wondering if the city administrator or Chad Pelichek could go over some of the financial details and if there are any incentives for the for the company that's going to be developing out there. Chad? Thank you, Mayor. So to answer your question, the um, price per acre that we're selling the property for is 20000 an acre. Um, the original proposal that we submitted to them was to uh, purchase 32 acres adjacent to I-43. Um, they came back and asked for an additional eight acres south of South Point Drive, which is the southernmost road in the business center. So they will be purchasing 40 acres. Um, in the development agreement, which is forthcoming, that document will be coming to the council once we uh, finish a few items in it. Um, it would provide a development incentive um, of around 888000 which is the cost of the land, back to them after year five. So they will have to create the increment, operate for five years, and then over a course of a five-year period, we would pay them back uh, what they invested in the land. So in essence, we're giving them uh, free land, although on paper they would be purchasing the land, um, provided they invest 18, a minimum investment of 18 million, uh, use local contractors as possible, and create up to 250 jobs in the development of two 240,000 square foot buildings. So um, I think it's, you know, we, we did the five year piece because we have around a 560 some thousand dollar debt service payment on the permanent financing for the park. Um, with the FedEx project that opened last year in our current business park, which is part of TID 18, um, that has around 110,000. So this project would generate right around the difference to make our debt service payment going forward. So the, the plan with the five years was that hopefully we'll get some additional development in the park over that time. And that once we start paying them back, we'll have other increment coming in to help offset our debt service payment, but ultimately to make us whole so we can make that payment. Just one follow up, uh, Chad, what, uh, what is that property going to be generating in property taxes uh, once it's up and running? And I guess from a previous discussion, I think I understood you to say that we will be collecting that property tax immediately. So the, the project, if I recall, would generate around 430,000 in taxes um, if they build what they're uh, stating and what would be required in the developer's agreement once it's built out. The second part of your question about it starting right away, I, it's, it's not gonna start right away, just surely on the, t it's, it's based on the value as of 1-1 one, one of the year when the assessor puts the value on it. So um, w whatever the value is at the January 1st, then we'll start getting taxes off of that. But I doubt that they're gonna have, their goal is to start, is to get plan approval this fall, start construction either uh, in the first quarter of 2022 or the spring of 2022, depending on the weather. Um, so I would say that it's probably a year construction. So um, for sure by, you know, we'll have some value on 1-1-2023, one, one, but the full value will be on 1-1-2024. One, one, Thank you. Any other additional follow-up questions for the consent agenda? Alderperson Savalio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, I had a question regarding the $50,000 uh, fee that the seller is paying to the city. I'm sorry, that the buyer is paying to the city and then the, um, the, the, the city is then paying back to a feasibility study person. Is, what is the true cost of the land then here? It, was that figured in and then this added on or can, can someone kind of go through that with me? It's an additional cost in there that we would pay the feasibility study to this outside firm. Um, we, fe we felt as staff that getting almost 20 to $30 million of investment and having to pay the $50,000 as the feasibility study, um, you know, wasn't a bad deal. So the, you know, we're still getting the same, we're getting the value on it. I don't know if they're gonna exercise the feasibility study clause um, and talking to their director of construction, they did not, they put that in there as a safeguard, but they, given that it's shovel ready and everything is there and it's ready to go, that I don't, not, I don't know that they're necessarily going to exercise all of that need, but we said that we would be willing to reimburse them as part of the proceeds. Is there an escrow agreement to go along with this $50,000 that should say who it gets paid out to if it's not used? It'll, in the agreement, in, it'll go back to the city. We would deduct it off of as part of the closing. And it's being held at the Woodland Title Services, the city's title company. I don't believe there's a separate agreement. Chuck would have to answer that. But it's, this offer would be that agreement is the way I understand it. It's all contained in the purchase and sale agreement. Thank you. Lord Person Feldy, did you have a comment? Um, I have a comment, yes. Um, if you go online, you can find information on S2A. Um, they do have other plants already built in Texas, Florida, and I'm trying to think of what was. There's three different places where they have. California. Where was the other one? California. California. Um, yeah, and there's some information about the modular homes that they make. Um, I was impressed with it, and if they follow through with the, you know, finding the local labor, labor um, bring them on. All right. Thank you for those comments. Any other comments for the consent agenda? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. Uh, 3.1 through 3.7 reports of officers will be referred to a variety of committees. Resolutions 4.1, um, resolution number 29, 21, 22 by Elder Persons Feldy, Flicky Paneski, and Salazar, designating the temporary public gathering space as described in section 110 604I, the municipal code. Um, Elder Person Feldy. Thank you, Mayor. I ask for suspension of the rules. Is there an objection? Seeing none, please proceed. Then I move to adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and second to adopt the resolution. Any discussion on this item? Uh, Chad? Thank you, Mayor. So just a little bit of uh, brief introduction into this. So the council at a couple meetings ago adopted a parklet resolution that allowed for businesses to apply to the city to do parklets within the right of way outside of their property or for the city to designate a community parklet for lack of better words. So what's happening here is this is the designation of a community parklet. It'll happen on St. Clair Avenue between Paradigm and the A Street Ale House and it'll serve as, it'll shut the street down in that area, um, and it'll serve as a basically a community area where people can take food and drinks and go out to the street and kind of recreate, if you will, similar to what you see happening on Tuesday nights at the A Street Eatery along uh, by Legend Larry's and the uh, Stefano restaurants. So this is the first phase of this. So it allows, the, the ordinance allows May 15th, and November 15th, the closure um, of the street to do so. Um, city staff has worked with the different departments to, to work through this plan. So we're gonna do it on a temporary basis. 
uh, through uh, fall of this year and see how the public likes it. And if we get positive comments and it's well utilized, we'll work on a more detailed plan for a uh, longer term closure in the, in the new year um, for next year. But the businesses, those two businesses, A Street Ale House and Paradigm, have spearheaded this. They've spoken with all of the businesses in that corridor and have gotten overwhelm, overwhelmingly positive support for it. So it's just another way of trying to activate our streets and give people another venue to recreate in. So we're hoping that you will sub, uh, support this. Okay. Older Person Mitchell, did you have a question? Okay. Additional comments? The person Prella? Yeah, I love the initiative. But I was wondering, is, is there already a schedule for that, like weekly schedules or when? I know there is a time frame, but I don't know if there is already a schedule for those activities. So it'll be, it, it really will just be first come, first serve. So the idea is to close it off and have some picnic tables. Um, there and just allow it all the time for people if they you know don't want to sit in either of the uh, establishments they can go out and eat their food in the street if it's nice weather and it just allows people to be outside. Long term the plan would be to do some type of temporary lighting across the street, um, some different kind of tables, maybe some outdoor uh, kind of like patio uh, fire pit things that are propane fired or something of that nature. Um, that would allow people to have another kind of, you know, recreation thing out there. So it's really just going to be almost like a park, if you will, in the street. And um, there's some examples of this if in West Allis and Wauwatosa that we've been kind of looking at as how to energize the street and, and bring another venue for people to participate with. Thank you. Additional follow-up? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right, that's approved. 4.2, resolution number 30-21-22 by Older Persons Feldy and Flicky Paneski, authorizing the city administrator to make a lump sum payment to the former municipal court clerk and sign any necessary documents in settlement of any and all claims and obligations that may exist between the city and former employees. Older Person Feldy. I ask for suspension of the rules. Any objection? Seeing none, please proceed. Then I move to adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Older person Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> I, I've got a lot to say about this, but I'm basically gonna keep my powder dry. Uh, I'm very upset with the way this was handled uh, for a city employee that was with the city for just short of 15 years. Uh, ran the municipal court uh, from from almost day one. Uh, just uh, I just I, I just don't like the way it was handled. Also, uh, Carolyn was also uh, just a wonderful a wonderful woman with a wonderful family, and I, I'm just sad to see this happen. Thank you, Thank Alderson you, Boren. Additional comments? Seeing none. This is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. All right, 4.3, resolution number 31-21-22 by Elder Prison Spelly and Flicky Paneski, authorizing and executing of a quick claim deed 
on 0.49 acres of land located between South 9th Street and South 10th Street, uh, the former railroad property adjacent to the former capital property from the City of Sheboygan to the Redevelopment Authority. Alder Person Feldy. I move, I ask for suspension of the rules. Is there any objection? Seeing none, please proceed. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. There's been a motion and second. Old um, Director Pelichek. Thank you, Mayor. So this document is to approve, a, is to transfer a piece of property that is basically adjacent to the Kepsel property. So this would be behind the businesses that used to lie on Indiana Avenue um, where they were purchased and torn down. There's three or four properties left uh, one is a, two of them are, the, are bars and the other two, one's a rooming house and one's a house. There was a piece of property that the city purchased years ago from the railroad directly to the north of that. Um, and it's, and all the other property around it is surrounded by ownership of the redevelopment authority. We're working with an outside developer that's going to be uh, looking at some options for that property and it just seems like it makes most sense for this, us to be working with one ownership group versus two, with the city owning a small sliver and the redevelopment authority owning the other two and a half acres. So we're hoping you'll support the transfer of this to the redevelopment authority. This will be coming back to the council in closed session at a future meeting to talk about the development and uh, those types of things related to possible development incentives. But at this stage, uh, we it, it'll be just easier if the developer is working with one ownership group instead of two. So we're hoping you'll support transferring this for a dollar to the redevelopment authority. Any comments or questions from elders? Older person, Licky Paneski. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, at redevelopment authority, we have been we have been looking at this developer, and when we see the map overlay, it's it's a tiny sliver. It's like it would have been an alley had it not been a railroad, and it would it would smooth all of the development. And I would encourage you to support it. Thank you, Older Person Prella. Can you please just define for me um, the identify for me the redevelopment? authorities as an entity, because I'm not familiar with it, bear with me on this. So why do we need to do that? So the redevelopment authority as an entity is a quasi-governmental entity that um, they operate under Chapter 66 of the Wisconsin State Statutes and they're primarily there to uh, redevelop and develop land. So it's kind of like an arm of the city on the development front and they've got some additional um, opportunities and things that the city can't do that they can do under chapter under the state statute. So they typically own parcels of land that are developed and or could be developed and they negotiate development deals similar to what the city does but under acquisitions and uh, removals and those types of things they have additional authorities that the city doesn't have. Just as a follow-up so that means basically it's like an arm of the city. That is correct. The, the members are appointed by the mayor. They operate under the open meeting laws like the city. They're a city committee in essence, but they have additional opportunities and duties that they can do aside from the city. Thank you. Other person, Flicky Paneski. Yeah, and, and just as an addition, one of the primary things we do is look at blighted land and we have the ability to take the blighted land, re redo it, and then package it for development. And it's much easier for the redevelopment authority to do that than it is for the city to become involved. Thank you. All right. Additional comments? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. All right, that's approved. All right, 4.4, resolution number 
5122 by older persons Belly and Flicky Maneski, authorizing the purchase of 5528 South Business Drive for future use for the city. Older person Feldy. I'm sorry, I'm lost. Where are we? 4.4. Uh, Thank you. Okay, I ask for a suspension of the rules, then I move to adopt the resolution. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, there's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's been a second. Discussion? Director Pelichek? Thank you, Mayor. So I don't, can WSCS put up the PowerPoint, please? So this doc, this item has gone before the Finance and Personnel meeting uh, Committee at their last meeting to talk about uh, this property. This, with the property that we're looking at is a, a piece of land that's kind of in, right in the smack dab middle of our uh, current business park. So on this slide, you can see where that land is. Um, it's directly north of Stall Road and south of Horizon Drive. Um, it's the only property in that section that was in the town of Wilson and it's surrounded by the city land. So we talked about, it came on the market, we, went, we couldn't get to the council to get in closed session because of the timing, so we went to the Finance and Personnel Committee which advised us on what to offer. We offered 305,000. Um, the property is, is roughly just under seven acres. Uh, it has a house on it, a uh, three-stall garage assessed at 190,000. Um, asking price was 299,000. Um, I talked about the reason we thought that it made sense that we wanted to uh, purchase it. So we offered 305,000 with no contingencies. At the time there was an offer, a primary offer before us. That offer fell through because of some contingency issues, so the realtor called us on Friday and said that they've now moved into the city's offer because it has no contingencies because our we're going to be demolishing the property because we really just want the land. So um, we thought it made sense for us to try to own that property given its location and given the challenges and the trying to develop around properties that are industrial and residential and having mixed land uses together. Um, so we have an accepted offer. Uh, contingent upon closing by the uh, committee by the council and then we would close that by the end of the month so hopefully by the end of July we'll uh, have this. We'll be funding this out of TID 18 fund balance and then pay it back based on revenues from that TIP district as we start generating them with new development. So if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer them but the committee uh, the Finance and Personnel Committee guided us on what to offer, and that's where the 305000 came from. Questions? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Thank you, Chad. Nine eyes. That's approved. All right, items 4.5 through 4.9 will be referred to a variety of committees. Um, reports of committees 5.1, RC number 672122 by the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 102122 by Older Persons Feldy, Ackley, and Boren, adjusting the forfeiture ranges in the Sheboygan Municipal Court uh, for a variety of different. Um, items there and, adopt, um, and adopting an updated bond schedule for the use of municipal court, municipal court proceedings, excuse me. Alder Person Feldy. I move to receive the RC and, re and adopt the ordinance. There's been a motion and a second. Discussion on this item. Alder Person Perella. I just was curious about uh, what triggered these changes? Uh, city Attorney? So a couple of things. Uh, first of all, we do sort of generally keep track of the bond schedule, uh, see how things are going, whether there are changes that need to be made. We review them on a regular basis. Second, in this case, uh, there had been some uh, questions from the, both the police department and from the municipal judge on uh, whether there might be 
some potential changes to be made uh, to the bond schedule. Uh, and so based on all of that, uh, Assistant uh, City Attorney Thomas Cameron worked through uh, the process, ran the changes, you know, reviewed the, the current schedule, reviewed the ordinances, ran the changes through the PD and uh, the municipal judge, and then brought them to licensing hearing and public safety. A follow-up question? So since I don't know how they looked before, looked like before, right? So we have the, the, the text, the changes, and I'm fine with that. The only thing is that I wonder the, the penalties that are the uh, specific penalties with the marijuana and the um, drug paraphernalia, are these um, established by state law? No, they, we established them. Uh, we set our own ordinances, uh, ordinance uh, forfeitures and the bond amount. So this is based on our, okay. you know, basically our policy. You're setting policy here on what the forfeiture range should be uh, and uh, what the bond amount is. And specific to marijuana and possession of drug paraphernalia, the bond amount, which is the amount that's actually written on the ticket, is not changing but the uh, forfeiture range uh, is moving down so that the, the potential range is less than what it had been before. But there have not been changes on the penalties should the fees, the ticket not be paid, the time in jail. Yeah, the, the, penalties are, the penalties are not changing other than the range. So the, the bond amount will stay the same. So if somebody doesn't show up uh, to their initial appearance, they're going to pay the same amount as they would have before. But this gives the judge a different range to work with if the judge decides that there are either um, mitigating factors or extenuating circumstances. The, 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 the range is different than it was. So the other penalties have not been changed? Yeah, so uh, in essence, uh, most of the changes here are uh, to um, the forfeiture range and to the bond schedule. The main difference, the other thing that's primarily changing is sort of the structure of the dangerous and vicious dog uh, ordinance is changing. Sort of out of experience, uh, we realize that certain ordinances are only written in cases of a dangerous dog. Certain are only written in case of a vicious dog. And we wanted to sort of have all of the dangerous dog ordinances sort of in one category, all the vicious dog ordinances in another category so that th there is similarity uh, in the penalties for those. Thank you very much. Alder Flikipneski. Um, when was the last time that these forfeitures, et cetera, were looked at and changed? The last time the bond schedule was changed would have been, I think, it would have been sometime between May of 2015 and November of 2017, sometime when Assistant City Attorney Rose Simon was here. Uh, she did the last review of it. All right, thank you. Additional comments on this item? Uh, Older person, Feldy. Thank you. Um, Chuck, I want to congratulate you and your office. I, I, I look through this and the document, uh, it, it starts on page four and it goes through page 22 of all of all of the, the different areas that you looked at, the bond and the range. Um, and I'm impressed. That, that was a lot to go through and, and decide you know, where you were going to put or how you were going to do it. I'm sure you followed something, but um, impressive. Thank you. Additional comments, questions? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote.
Nine eyes. That is approved. All right. General ordinances will be referred to a variety of different committees. Um, item number seven, other matters authorized by law. City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a license application for a change of agent. That will be referred to the LHPS committee. 7.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Michael Miller regarding an alleged nuisance bar at 1133 Michigan Avenue. That will also be referred to the LHPS committee. 7.3 is a resolution by all the persons Decker and Perella authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an easement for Torganol Incorporated uh, for three uh, parcel numbers in the city of Sheboygan. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. And 7.4 is a resolution by all the persons Decker and Perella authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an addendum to the contract with both Infrastructure and Environment LLC for design services related to the Southside Interceptor System Rehab Access Road Shoreline Protection Program. And that will be referred to the Public Works Committee as well. So we've exhausted our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move person? to adjourn. Second. There's been a motion and second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We're adjourned at 635. Thank you, everybody.